us. If you do not have a Bible, when we move, you're not going with us. <laughs> Only those with Bible. <laughs> okay. Let's see your Bible, church. Let's see your Bibles. Let's turn our Bibles in the book of Hebrews. 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 Um, coffee. Hebrews. And let's turn into chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews. And we are concluding our series today about the story of Noah. And in this series, we've been talking about the story of Noah. And last week, we talked about Noah just living out the boat. And, and God called us to move forward and to move on. And, and today, I just want to sum summarize pretty much what we learned throughout this whole series. And what a timely message. Because today, I called our I entitled our final message in, the, in this series, Noah, Hall of Famer. Say Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Many of you guys, if you don't know, Hebrews chapter 11 is mainly called as the Hall of Faith. Say Hall of Faith. Hall of Faith. Because this is where the whole chapter just talks about the author of Hebrews, which we, of course, we really don't know the author of Hebrews, talks about all these men of faith in the Bible and what, what faith is truly about. And one of those men of faith was Noah. And so we study that in the whole series that Noah entered the ark by faith, built the ark by faith. God sealed it and God told him to leave the ark by faith and so we can start over again. And, and God is continually challenging us and challenging us and even this time. And I cannot tell you how, how, how many times that God has just spoken through, through me. During this time of learning that, okay, you know, we might not have be able to do what we want to do in this church and this and going around. And let me tell you this, it's not easy to find a place here because every time you mention the word church, people are just starting saying, oh, we cannot do that. We cannot allow church here and this and that because there's different zoning and this and that. And, but all, that, all God is just telling me, don't react based on what you are hearing. React based on what is happening and what I'm going to do. And that is a great opportunity to practice our faith. Many some of us here this morning have the same happening in your life right now that there is a great challenge, there's a great struggle, there's a great question, there's doubts, there's fears. There are things that God is putting you and setting you up in a place where God is calling you. I want you to act by faith. Not just by what you think is logical, not just by what you think is what you can see, but just by completely trusting it to me. Let's pray together. Father God, we trust you. We know, Lord, that you're never too slow to to do what you promise us, Lord God. And truly, Lord God, this morning, what is just a great reminder, Lord, of who you are in our lives, Lord God. And, and we know, Lord, that there are so many greater things, Lord, that is just ahead of us, Lord God. And, and we know, Lord, that all we need to do, Lord God, is just act by faith, Lord God. Not by sight, not by what we see, Lord, but, but what we know and what you told us, Lord. And so, Father, this is our prayer this morning, Lord. That we may able, Lord God, to trust you completely. May we be able, Lord God, to, to really walk by faith, Lord God, and, and trust, Lord, that you already got this, Lord, before we even think about it. You already have something in plan. You already looking. You already have something waiting for us, Lord God. So, Father, we just commit this time to you, and uh, we lift up everything to you. And we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Turn to the person next to you and say, you ready? You ready? There are two things I want to ask you guys to do right now. And I want you to use your imagination. Say imagination. imagination. Turn to the person next to you and say, Imagination. Say, imaginación. I don't know if that's a uh, Tagalog like word or no, that's a Spanish word. But imagination or imaginación. And 
I'm going to show you guys a picture. And I want you to imagine a very dark hole. Very dark hole. On the ground. Very dark. You don't know what's in the bottom. And I want you to also, on top of your head, think of the person you trusted the most. Who would that be? You don't have to say it. Just think about it. The person that you trusted the most. The person that you would trust your life. Aside from God, of course. The person that you know that you would trust the most. And can we show the picture real quick? And so you're standing at this very dark hole. And this person that you trusted the most tells you, it's okay to jump. Something is waiting for you at the bottom. Now this is just not someone that you just met, okay? Again, it could be your wife, if you love your wife, the one that you trusted the most, okay? Or maybe that's a bad example, okay, then erase that. <laughs> or your husband, or you know, whatever that is, okay? A very dark hole, such as just this one, and you're standing at the edge of it, and this person that you trust the most, your whole life, tells you, hey, it's okay, just jump, bro. Someone's waiting there, someone's gonna catch you. The challenge is, would you jump? And if you won't, why not? Well, as you guys know me, I'm scared of heights. So that's a good excuse. I know somebody's gonna catch me, but I'm just scared of heights. So I'll probably not go. The point is this. This is a big picture and a simple picture of how faith truly works. Can I hear an amen? amen? What we're gonna talk about today is that faith it's not about what you see. Most of the times it's the things that you don't see that you have to trust the person that you trust most by his word. That's why you're going to do it anyway because you have confidence not on what you see or but what you have been told and what you have been promised. Faith people is trusting the very word of God. Can I hear that? Yeah. If we could turn our Bibles in the book of Hebrews and hear the author of Hebrews explains to us what makes Noah do what he did. Can you imagine Noah was about 500 years old when God told him, Noah, build an ark. It took him about 100 years to build an ark. He was telling people that there, well, you know, God told me that there's a flood coming and will wipe out the whole world. Did anyone listen? Of course not. Because everybody else doesn't understand. Because based on what they see, they're looking around. You're building a boat on top of a mountain. I don't get it. And that is true because many of us in our human nature, and what really frightens us is when we see something that is unknown. Can you hear that? The first time that somebody asks you, let's go to this place, the first thing you're going to ask, is it safe? Have you been there? And then somebody tells you, well, no, it's my first time to go. Then how do you know what's going to happen? Or how do you know where to go? Well, we're just going to explore. The main thing that scares us is the feeling that we are not in control. Can you hear that? In every aspect of our life, we always want to have what? Control. And that is what being challenged every time God calls us, just like what we experience every day in our lives. When somebody tells you this, there is, oh, you know, you don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, let's just hope for something. That is an opportunity for what? Faith. This whole thing of waiting, or this whole thing of whether, okay, are we going to be able to be here, or this and that, we cannot see it. But it is an opportunity to practice our faith. Here's the challenge for us this morning, River Faith Church. And I just love the name of our church. It says, the river of what? Faith. faith. I tell the seminar this weekend, it differentiates now, I understand, what's the difference between a swamp and a river. 
You guys know the difference between a swamp and a river? The river flows deep and it flows and it goes. Swamp, it's stagnant. That's why swamp stinks. Swamp, there's mud, there's, you know what you call that green thing? Algae? What do, you, what do you call it? Algae? Algae? Whatever you guys call it. I just know it's called Lumot in Tagalog, okay? Because everything in the swamp is what? It's dead. There's no flow, water, everything is kind of dead. And we are called the river of faith. That means our faith continues to grow, continues to be active, continues to, 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 to go and to show where the river is flowing. And so it's the, it's the question for us this morning, River Fair Church. When was the last time you acted completely by faith? Just like jumping on that dark hole. You don't know what's in there, you don't know what's in the bottom, you don't know if there's a net there, you don't know if it's just flat. It reminds me of our family camp when, you know, when, when we had a zip line. I thought I could do it until I went up there and I thought to myself, this is a bad idea. It looks a lot shorter when, you, when you're on the bottom and when you're on the top. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know if this cable is really going to hold up. I know everybody done it a lot of time, but there's always a question. Can I hear an amen? As people of God, as Christians, we always say, you know, we live by faith and not by sight. But truly, when was the last time that any of us really acted by God? I'm just going to trust you to what you said. No buts, no ifs, and I'm not teaching hyper faith where you just said, oh, you know, by the name of Jesus, this is mine. Period. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about based on the word of truth of God. Based on the character of God. Based on the context of who Jesus is in your life. That you are confronted with worries and fears every now and then. Sometimes even every day in your life. There is fear. And what causes that fear? The fear of the unknown. You don't know and you have no control over it. And God is saying, this is the perfect time I want you to understand what faith truly is about. Because if you read the scriptures, let's read it from verse 1, Hebrews chapter 11, look what it says here. It says here, now faith is the what? Is the what? Is it the doubt? Is it the second mindedness? Is it the questions? Is it the fears? Is it the frustrations? No. The Bible says faith is the what? Confidence. Have you ever been so confident in your life? You know, it's hard to show up to work without confidence. Are you with me? It's hard to show up to work and say, oh, I don't know if I could really do this. No. If you show up to work almost instant, you have confidence. You say, no, I know this. I've been doing this for quite some time. I know I can figure this out. I know it might be a tough day because someone's busy, someone called in. But you know what? I know this job very well. That's confidence. That's not just, I hope so. I think it will happen. No. Bible says, faith is the what? Confidence. And when you have confidence, your time to worry is much lesser. Are you with me? Have you seen anyone that is so confident and still look worried at the same time? That, that would look really weird. It's like you're confident and you're worried, but how do you, how do, you do that? No, when you are confident, your fear subsides. The worry subsides because you know that it's just right there outside the door waiting and you know it's going to happen. And that's not based on what you see. And that's one of the pointers that we have this morning. Same with Noah. Are you with me? When God told Noah, Noah, build an ark because there's going to be a flood. And Noah's like, where? And many scholars believe that not until the time of Noah, there's not a single drop of rain that ever made the earth yet. 
And God is speaking about pouring out and opening the floodgates of heaven and the rain is going to pour. And so Noah is thinking, what, what are you talking about, God? What is flood? What is rain? How is water going to come and fill up the whole earth? He doesn't see it. That is the point. But he's trusting what he's being told. Can you hear me? Yeah. Faith is the substance, is the confidence that what we hope for will actually what? Happen. And the number one, the number one enemy of our faith is what? Now I'm not saying that if you are confident, if you have faith, that there is no doubt at all. Sometimes it is with the presence of doubt that you understood that you have a greater faith. Amen. Can you hear an amen? Sometimes it is with the absence, sometimes it is with the presence of doubt that you realize that, man, I have faith because I was able to overcome whatever I am doubting, whatever I am worrying about. Why? Because I know that He who is in me is greater than He who is in the world. Amen. Because I know my God who promises that whatever happens, I am completely surrendered to His will. And whatever the answer is, whether it be for my favor or not my favor, I know it is God's will for my life. Can I hear an amen? Let's give that to our God this morning. Have you ever come to the point in your life? You are in control. Whatever the last result is, you are in control. Because I believe that you will not allow anything to happen to your children. I trust you. Now the question is, well, how come this happened, how come this happened? If you are submitted truly to the will of God, you understood that whether it is not your definition of good, and by the way, our definition of bad, it's because just we don't like it. Can I hear an amen? amen? A definition of bad is just we don't like it. But not everything that we don't like is actually really bad. Can I hear an amen? amen? When you exercise, when you... When you exercise, when you go out, work out, when you run, you don't like it, you get tired. No question. Is that bad for you? No. Well, actually, it's good for you. Actually, people remind you that at least work out, at least run a little bit, at least do all these things. Not but just because you don't like it, it's really bad. There are times that God's going to call you and it's not going to be comfortable. But that doesn't mean that God's punishing you. It doesn't mean that God is saying, oh, this is a bad thing that's going to happen to you. The point is, we must always, always ask God, God, am I missing the silver lining? Because sometimes we focus too much on the things we see. There's a place that I looked at and, and you know, we went back and forth and I thought, man, this is a perfect place for our churches and this and that. And, and after waiting for about a week or so, they tell us, no, we can, we can do church. And as a human being, you're susceptible to what? Discouragement. And I'm like, God, I'm your child. Does this guy know who Pastor Ray is? <laughs> Don't they know who I am? <laughs> With my right hand, Pastor Tobert Mata? <laughs> Maybe I should give them a picture of my co-pastor Tobert. I'm like, oh, why? And the simplest thing that God tells me is, don't focus on the nose. Don't focus on what you are hearing. Focus on what? Focus on what I'm doing. Because everything in your life might be saying no and shutting doors. But if you focus too much on that, you miss the opportunity to see that God is opening a bunch of windows. And God is saying, I got this. I always have. I will always will. Because I always look after my children. And I always look after who belongs to me. Can I hear that? Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us what? Not just insurance. Assurance. 
It's good to have insurance, it's good to have warranties, it's good to have all that that gives you peace of mind. But here's one thing I realized, as human beings, the most important thing that we need in our life is life assurance. Assurance that we will have life after our physical life here on earth. Because as you guys know, time flies. You wake up one morning and 50 will knock on your door. 60 will knock on your door. 70 will knock on your door. The question now is, have you ever had that peace in your heart knowing that you have life assurance? The Bible says that what faith brings. Assurance about the things that what? It brings assurance about the things that what? That we can't see. How many of us are like the doubting Thomas? Right? Where everybody's telling you, mate, the Lord was here. And the Thomas was like, no, it can't be. I saw him crucified. I saw him, the, I saw the guard punch a hole in his rib. And I saw him taken down, dead. And Thomas was like, there's no way I would believe. And then the following time that they meet together, Jesus just swooshed in and called Thomas. And Thomas said, come here, Thomas. I want you to put your, your finger through my hand and to my side. And what did Jesus tell him? Blessed are those who? Blessed are those who? Who do not see, but yet they believe. Can you hear me? Amen. I, have to, I have to say, I cannot take credit for anything that God is doing. None of you will show up this morning just because I'm preaching. There is a God that you cannot see that speaks to your heart. Amen. That's why when that song comes on, those hands raise up. Amen. Those hearts start melting. Those hearts start pounding. And when the words of God are being spoken, you're like, how do you know that? I didn't know it. It's God. Amen. But you don't see him. Can you hear me? And we don't need a picture of him. We don't need a statue of him. We don't need anything because we know that he exists. Can you hear me? Amen? We know that he exists for by it the elders obtain a what? A good testimony and approval. Look what it says in verse 3. Faith. By faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That we now see did not come from anything that cannot be seen or can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave what? Evidence that he was righteous man and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is a long dead, he still speaks to us by his what? Example of faith. Number one, your notes. Turn to your notes this morning. Look what it says here. Faith deals with the things that are unseen. But oh, Pastor, I cannot stop worrying because I just cannot see it. Duh. <laughs> That's why God says, faith is the assurance of the things we hope for that we do not see. Because if you already see it, then it is not by faith. Well, God, you should be proud of me. Look what I did. Based on what I saw already that's going to happen. No, God says, faith works well. And you practice it when you really don't know what is going on. Can I hear that? And if you read the whole chapter, it's the same thing. 19 times, say 19 times. The whole chapter says, it was by faith. That all these men acted on what God tell them to do. Did they see it? Absolutely not. I was sitting in my classroom. It was still then what they call ITT tech. And I was studying something about computers. That's all I remember. <laughs> something about computers. And I was on my way to be some kind of computer engineer. Or, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I was promised that's what I was going to be, but to tell you the truth, I didn't learn anything. 
I have a toolbox. I, don't, I cannot even name what's in my toolbox. And so I was sitting there, and finally that call of God was so loud and clear. Told me, Ray, I, you know, I don't want you to be there. And prior to that, God's already been tugging in my heart and telling me, no, I want you to be in a ministry. I want, there's this school that I want you to go to. I want you to learn. And I didn't know what exactly what the calling was. Are you going to be a pastor? Are you going to be a preacher? Whatever it is. I just knew that whatever I was then, that's not exactly what God wanted me to do. Now you can consult a psychiatrist and probably prove that I was hallucinating or whatnot. But let me tell you this. Ten years ago, God brought me here today. Amen. I cannot be hallucinating. Because you guys are here. <laughs> if you're not here, then that means you're just hallucinating with me. Does that make sense? Okay? That means God really called me out for a specific purpose and plan. Don't ignore your calling. Turn to the person next and say, Don't ignore your calling. If you're still asking, Was that God? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And the only way to act on that, and young people, let me tell you this, you'll never feel so fulfilled in your life. Whatever career you're going to pursue, I'm up for that. I spoke to you guys about that. But there's young people, I'm going to tell you this. Pursue your own. It will blow your mind what God's going to do to you. It will blow your mind. You know, actually this year, I'll be celebrating the first time God gave me an opportunity to preach. November 27, 2007. The title of my message was Trick or Trick. <laughs> I spoke about Genesis chapter 3 when the servant deceived Adam. I remember that was 10 years. 2007. Wow! What God has done. In the reaction of my book. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Let's give him a hand for our One emphasis of faith is the fact that it deals with things that are not seen. Or human nature yearns for control and certainty, and certainty, not being controlled and not able to see the end result naturally scares us. That is why I believe this is where God chose faith to be practiced. Because when you realize and when you understand and when you finally surrender your life to God, you understand that you are never truly in control. Can you hear me? You are never truly in control. One of the things that all people mentioned in this chapter had in common is they believed and trusted God even when they do not see what was promised yet. That word yet is very important. Because sometimes we run out of patience too quickly. Can you hear me, man? How many of you become so impatient with God? Like as if you have a choice. Like what, you gotta throw a tantrum and God can just pick you up and say, oh, okay, well, I'm just gonna. No, God says, you know, a thousand years is like a day to me, and a day to me is like a thousand years. So good luck. Good luck if you get a battle with me with time. What what God after is really our heart that is completely trusted to Him. Is it easy? No. But is it impossible? No. It doesn't mean that it's hard that it's impossible. It just means that God is stretching our ability to practice our faith even more. Amen. Can you hear me? Amen. How many of you ever been to a gym? Maybe this is not a good question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when was the last time you were in the gym? Of course, except for Sister Del. Sister Del. <laughs> but the first time you do your, your thing, you pick up a dumbbell, like two pounds, <laughs> right? And you do like, what, five reps? And then you go to the weight scale and like, oh, nothing change? <laughs> first time you pick up a dumbbell, you work it out, the following morning, guess what happens? Sore. Sore. Why? Because God, because what you're doing is you're stretching your muscles 
that's been sleeping <laughs> all this time, relaxing, savoring buffet, you know, all, all this, you know. <laughs> and then when you wake them up, it started to hurt. You know why it's so hard sometimes to trust God? 